Hey everybody, Bridie Kelly here. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. Um, I have gone through some really interesting things. Um, when I started my detox in 2013, February, I had detoxed a year on my own before that, and I got on Dr. Morse's herbs, M-O-R-S-E, and glanulars, and um, everything was going really well. I already had kind of an idea of my diet uh, it was really easy for me to do no dairy, no meat. Um, the only thing I've ever had problems with is quitting chocolate. So um, eating wasn't really a problem for me. And smoothies really, really help a lot if you uh, are hungry all the time. Making a really good fruit smoothie with some coconut water and, and juice some oranges and put some orange juice in there, that's a great ad. Um, by I'd say probably about May of 2013, I started having uh, my heart acting up. My heart would just all of a sudden brrrr, or if I was doing something, it'd start beating so hard it'd move like my bed and I have a huge bed and it would move the bed with the beats. Now, as I had told you in previous videos, I had panic attack disorder and it really showed up when I was about 12, 13 years old. And um, I knew my heart acted weird, but I always associated it with panic attack disorder. So when I talked to doctors about it, they finally took it serious about 27 years old and they came up with that I had tachycardia and they put me on a beta blocker. Well, the beta blocker would slow down my heart rate. But it would also drop my pulse down. There was at one time where I was so lethargic, I drove myself to a clinic that wasn't even one of my clinics and the doctor looked at me and said, sit down, and my pulse was 35. So beta blockers are so dang dangerous. Um, just, they're horrible. So, of course, here I am trying to get off all the drugs. And I was also still, like, Paxil was the hardest drug of all to get off of. And like I said before, I probably was on 14 plus drugs. And throughout the duration of all the diagnosis and everything, probably on over 50. And I am going to make a list of all the drugs I had taken, even if I hadn't taken them for a long period of time, just the drugs that had been diagnosed to me throughout the time so that you have an idea. But um, in May, with my heart acting like that, and they had already had me on a beta blocker from the time I was 27 on, I um, figured it was detox. I figured these were this was a healing crisis. Then, at the same time, I was having my conscious awakening, and um, I've always been a truth seeker. So here I'm having a conscious awakening, and I'm thinking, this is conscious awakening symptoms, and this is healing crisis. So I started making sure I was taking my kelp three times a day. That helped tremendously, and I just kind of dealt with it. If it came up, I would take a half of a blade of beta blocker. Um, I would say probably in August 2015, uh, it got so bad that like if I was doing any work at all, sometimes my heart would, even at the gym, my heart would just brrrr, and I couldn't catch my breath. And instantly, of course, it would start a panic attack. And again, you don't know if it's the panic attack making the heart race or is it the heart that's making you have the panic attacks. And doctors cannot defer between those either. They expect you to figure that one out on your own. So I finally went to the doctor and I'm like, there's something really wrong. I figured they would make me wear a heart monitor again. Um, but he knows that I'm self-top herbalist. He knows that I really pay attention to my physical and mental. He's seen me taper off of drugs. So he, he, you know, he has a history with me and he was like, well, have you ever thought about, oh, he, he wanted to do the beta blocker. He wanted to uh, double the dose, but my blood pressure is already low. And I said, if we double the dose, what will that do to my blood pressure and my pulse? And he's like, good point. I'm like, yeah. And the other thing also is when you're exercising and you're on a beta blocker, your heart rate's never going to get up to the fat burn phase. It shouldn't on a beta blocker. Um, so I would have lost all the weight I've been, I still probably would like to lose about 38 pounds. I've lost almost 80 because I gained some weight. Um, but I couldn't figure out why it was so hard for me to lose weight because I was working as hard as everybody else and I'm, I know how to work out. And it was because the beta blocker was keeping my heart from beating 
the way it needed to beat fast when you're working out so that you get that fat burning thing going. So he sat there for a minute and he goes, have you ever thought about an ablation? And I said, an ablation? I'm like, explain. And he said, well, they go in through your growing uh, and they take these catheters and they go up into your heart. And um, if you have an SVT, which is something that can make your heart have the off beats and it can cause the tachycardia, he goes, they, they solder around that beat and then the scar tissue will cover that and it won't affect your heartbeat anymore. I'm like, yeah, I'm down, I'm down for that because my thinking is this, with Western medicine being such a screw up on a lot of stuff, we do have amazing surgeons, okay? And there are great doctors out there that are waking up as well and listening to us and they, they're getting it. So I went literally the next day, this is how fast it all went for me. And I'm with my conscious awakening, I've learned about flow. And I told myself, if this flows smoothly, then is it, this is exactly what I need to do. So I went to the surgeon and I, he goes, do you have SVT? And I said, I'm pretty sure I do. He didn't even really check it. He was like, let's get you in as fast as possible. So you don't have, because I was miserable. I, I literally would be like even driving and have to feel like, oh my God, you know, my heart would just go crazy trying to catch my breath. And he understood that and he listened and it was fabulous. So I, I think it was like a week later, went in for my first ablation and they found one SVT and um, it wasn't a horrible experience whatsoever. It was uh, the medication they give you, it was very mellow. The before and after care is great. Um, and I'm in Arkansas, so let me tell you, it's not a bad experience, okay, at all. But after the first ablation, within a week, I was having even more severe symptoms. My tachycardia was getting me up to 244 beats sitting. I would be sitting and I would have, I have an app on my phone that we have actually checked with the ER <laughs> to see if they do actually work. And the app was right on with the EKG monitor checking my pulse. So uh, I came home and I told my son, I think I need to go to the hospital. And he said, okay. And he took me to the hospital, it stopped by the time I had gotten there and that's okay. So I made an appointment and went and saw my doctor's assistant and they listened to me again and said, we need to go back in and see if we missed an SVT. And I said, okay. Went in for the second ablation, but when I got out of this one, uh, a guy standing behind me goes, how did you feel that? There is, he goes, that's amazing to me. You shouldn't have felt that. They found out I had AFib. Um, AFib is a arterial fibrillation. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And um, my dad has it and it makes his heart act very crazy. And you get those extra beats. And um, AFib is actually a very horrible thing to live with. I just found out recently that somebody I know is living with it and is not going to get an ablation done. So... Um, I cried because I, I, I had been in the hospital with my dad for over a year, uh, the year of 2000, half of 13 and half 14, AFib and, and all the surgeries and cancers and there's just been a lot of stuff going on. So I cried and then I said, what are my options? And the doctor, this is where me and him started arguing. He said, well, you need to take this medicine. It, it's going to make the beat normal, da 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 da. And me, I don't want to take any damn medicines. And he knows that. He So we, we've got to a, quite an argument. I had a friend there that stepped in the middle and she was like, what she's trying to say is, what can she do instead of taking the medicine? And he said, well, we can do an AFib ablation. And I said, will that work? And he said, at your age, with your health, it should work great. And I said, sign me up. I went in for my third ablation. It was a horrible experience. Um, and I don't want to sway anybody not to do it. Uh, just go in knowing that for me it was, you know, because they have to get into your artery. The guy was like really digging into my artery. There's different things for the AFib ablation than just doing an SVT ablation. Um, I still highly recommend getting it done. I don't think you should live with it. And I don't think that you should be on any medications. Those beta blockers, guys, those are dangerous. Dangerous. 
And what if you take too much? Or what if that day is not as bad and you take too much? I mean, it, every day is different. Your body's different. It's just dangerous. So after the AFib ablation, um, I really made myself rest. Um, of course, I've been working on my spirituality and my consciousness. And I've been really in-depth learning who I am. Um, quite an interesting road. I'm going to do a video on that. So... I made myself rest for a week, which was tremendously hard. If you know me, you know that I have to have things clean. I, I'm always going to go to the gym. I take care of my dad. I do everything I can. Plus, I'm detoxing, you know, most of the time. Of course, through all this heart stuff, that started, I think, in August. And we just had the third one on Halloween. And now we're into January. And he said to give me all the way till February for full scar tissue healing and everything. <laughs> But I can say this, I feel great. I have hiccups every once in a while where it's just like, do, 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 and this stops. And then I go, <laughs> and then it's like, oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I still do take a half of a Xanax because it, it keeps me from having the panic attacks when that happens. So I'm still working my way off of that drug. I'm down to three drugs, guys, three drugs. I take Xanax. I take um, Flexerol, and Flexerol is a muscle relaxer, and I take Zantac, and that Zantac is almost gone too. I rarely need that. Um, I added homemade kombucha tea to my detox, and um, when I help others with their detox, I'm now going to recommend that they add this to theirs as well. It's a good stomach healer. It's great for the digestion, and it's really been helping me. So I don't need the Zantac as much. So I'm almost down to just two drugs. So, I mean, that's huge. Uh, my heart's doing great. Um, for a while working out, my heart rate wouldn't get up there. Of course, I was really watching my heart rate too, so I wouldn't let it get too far. You know, if I got over like 125, 130, I was like, ooh, scared. But uh, now let's see. Um, I think it was day before yesterday, I got it up to 144, 145 comfortably working out. It felt great. Um, I gained the weight that I was talking about earlier. I have put on, had put on nine pounds throughout all those surgeries and I've still got eight to lose. Um, that's fine because it was so worth it. The ablations were worth it. The arguing with the doctor was worth it. Um, getting off that beta blocker, definitely worth it. And, um, as of a week ago, a week ago, week, I think about a week ago, I've started a new detox on myself. Um, and I have my kombucha. Um, I just got another box today from Dr. Morris. Got some more herbs and glandulars. Um, I'm going to do kidney glandular again. I noticed with the anesthesia, the painkillers and all the other drugs they gave me and then plus the radiation that I had to take intake. I know that I have to detox all that out. Uh, I've noticed my thyroid is back down. I'm having a lot of problems with temperature. Um, not sweating like I was sweating before. Um, and I also noticed that my kidneys have dropped again. That's what I call it, drop, when they're not functioning fully. So uh, I got a kidney glandular that's here today. So I'm going to work on my thyroid, my kidney, my lymphatic, uh, my bowels and stomach. I'm trying to think of what else I'm working on. Oh, um, I can't remember all of them. I'm taking probably 10 tinctures. I take kelp three times a day. Um, oh, I did get the adrenal capsules because um, working on your adrenals, it affects what's going on with your heartbeat. So if you notice that your heart's doing some crazy things, get a hold of me, obviously get a hold of Dr. Morris, and you might not need to be on the glandulars, you might need to take it slow. So um, to get my adrenals back up, I'm doing just the regular capsules. Uh, I did do the tincture on those because I wanted a different kind of release system for this. Uh, tinctures tend to get in there fast. The capsules digest slower. So it'll be a slower uh, pick-me-up on my adrenals, so it won't affect my heartbeat so much. 
Um, and I'm also doing the kidney glandulars, which we know the glandulars are very strong. They do come from cows. Uh, the cows are happy cows, grass fed in the sunlight, and they do not take on the fear when they're um, killed. And the reason that I chose that, being mostly vegan, um, I haven't been perfect for the last six months. Let me tell you, I've, through all the surgeries and stuff and the messing with my esophagus and everything, I have eaten some dairy. But uh, I do the glandulars when I need that oomph. And my kidneys are telling me they need oomph, they need help. So I chose to do the glandulars for the kidneys. Everything else I'm doing is either tinctures I've made or what I'm buying from Dr. Morse. And I'm making smoothies in the morning. I make a turmeric, ginger, honey tea. I do the kombucha. Um, I eat a salad at night. I try to get as much fruit drink or whatever I can in in the day. And I'm trying to get back on that cycle that I was used to of detox because I had it to the point where I was, I was completely vegan and I was doing everything perfect except I never got rid of the fat, this chocolate thing. I always have to have chocolate. So I'm working still on that, but out of everything that I've gone through, um, I'm more awake, I'm more alive. I can do more than I have ever been able to do. Um, all my life there's always been roadblocks up with my health or my mental health, even emotional health. And I don't have those blocks so much. I'm still working through things. Um, but it, it really is, we're here to evolve. So we're here to work on these things. So that's what we're doing. But I wanted to do an update video and I wanted to share why I haven't been doing videos because if it wasn't my dad in the hospital, then it was me. So now everything's great. My heart works great. I'm, um, I still have some anxiety, which is my adrenal glands. That's why I'm working on them. <clears throat> so I'm, like I said, it's when you're detoxing, you might hit some roadblocks. Don't give up. Never give up. Keep going. Um, I'm not going to be done with this until my eyes are completely blue and I don't know if you can see but they have cleared up so much They are getting so clear um, Around my iris or I'm sorry my pupil was degenerative. It was very um, almost well. It was between Chronic and degenerative. It was like brownish black. My stomach was just getting eaten up Now it's kind of yellow so it's, it's slowly, I'm going through the layers and I'm clearing it out. And that's what we gotta do. And even with anything else that you are dealing with in life here on this planet, um, it's layers. And you just keep going through these layers and you're gonna clear them up. You gotta face them, release them, clear them. And that's what we have to do on the physical. So that's where I'm at with my heart and I wanted to keep the video under 20 minutes and I did, yay. So um, I'm also gonna do more videos to help everybody. I have a Facebook page now called Bridie's Detox and Wellness. Um, you're more than welcome to add yourself and ask questions. That's what I'm here for. Um, things are going really, really well for me. And my dad's doing great. In case anybody was wondering, he's doing great. I drive him to work and drive him home. He's still working full time and um, everybody's doing really well and so am I. I'm just getting back on that detox road and getting that mental set of how I do things again because kind of got a little lost there for a while. Anyways, um, I just want you guys to know that I'm always here for you. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Google. Um, I love helping people. That's what I'm here to do. So if you need anything, just get a hold of me and I love you guys. And don't give up on yourself.